I'll let the uh, kids go out if they'd like to go out now. If you have your Bibles, we're uh, continuing a series on daily rest. Daily rest. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5 today. We're going to look at uh, verse 2, Ephesians chapter 5. And how that when you're walking in life, we need to have somebody to hold on to. We need to have somebody to hold on to. And as we look at that, I want us to look back uh, on last week in just a minute. And uh, again, if you have your Bibles, it's Ephesians chapter 2. But uh, just want to let you know I spoke a little too soon last week about something. Just wanted to share this with you that uh, talked about I didn't get any negative response about being a dog person instead of a cat person. And... Uh, I'm going to say one more thing about this and then I'm done with it, okay? Now, I love dogs, the whole thing. Used that. If you were here, you used the dog illustration a couple weeks ago. And just dogs are like humans, but cats are something else. But anyways. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I didn't get a response, but then I did get a response. I'm going to leave it this and then we're going to go on. Whenever I'm with somebody and they, they want to challenge me about their cat, and how amazing that their cat is, this is what they say, and I rest with this argument. You know, my cat acts just like a dog. I rest my case. Why would you say that if you didn't want a dog? Then just get a dog and, well, that's all right. Keep your cats, that's fine, but I just want you to know that we're all good and we can get on with the message today. Let's pray. Father, we are so glad that we're here today. Jesus, will you remind those right now, today, will you let them know as we looked at last week that we need to sit with you? And Jesus, it's not a sin we know when we are just tired. So many people, Father, are tired. We talked last week, Jesus, about you and how when we sit with you, Jesus, in high places, you will show us what to do. Help us today to see now as we get strong as we have been able to sit with you. You've given us strength. Show us today how that we need to walk, where that we need to walk. In Jesus' name, amen. I can't say that enough today. As we, and, and I'll just say this about last week. If you're tired in life, if, if life gets you down sometimes, I, I want you to know it's, it's okay. It's, they're, they're, it's not a sin to be tired. It's okay. And when you sit down with Jesus long enough, He's going to so energize you in, in such a way you're going to know that there's something that you need to do. And you become strong enough after you've been with him because this is what he does. You sit in a place with Jesus, then you don't sit anywhere else. The Bible says he pulls you up to sit with him in a heavenly place to where you can actually see what is going on. That's discernment. That's wisdom. You can see what is happening in your life and what you need to do next. What do you need to do? Where are you? What do you need to do today next? Now it's time, as the Bible says in Ephesians, we're supposed to walk. We're supposed to walk. We get strong enough. We've taken the time with Jesus. We're sitting with him. doesn't mean sometime down the road you go back and sit down again. But today we're going to look at how the, we're walking with him. In Ephesians chapter 5, the Bible tells us in verse 2, how that we begin to walk. And walk in love. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us and offering a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling room. Let me read the first part again. And walk in love as Christ has loved us. Walk in love as Christ. Has loved. You ever have somebody that, that has really hurt you? It's hurt you to the place to where you, you feel like you're there. And it's just there and you can't get past it. I, I want you to know today, through Jesus, that you have the freedom to walk. 
I want to explain that. Christ is our example. No matter what's happened in our life, we have to forgive. No matter what you would tell me, no matter what I would tell you, we have to forgive. Because as a Christian, we forgive others as Christ has forgiven us. He loved us so much that he, that he first forgave us. So if there's anyone in your life that you're struggling with, right, for you to walk in that newness of life, you have to forgive. I, I know that you don't want to hear that. Sometimes I don't want to hear that. There's some people in your life, no matter what you do, you will never satisfy. There's people in your life that has hurt you deeply, maybe as a child, maybe in a broken relationship. I don't know what it is, but you have to. If you don't get anything else I have to say, get this. You have to forgive them. Have to be willing. He said, Dallas, it's up. I know it's tough. But through the power of Jesus, you can do it. Forgive. The Bible says of what? And walk in love as Christ is loved. What's the definition of his love? It's his forgiveness. It's his forgiveness for you and for me. So when you forgive, now here's what I want you to get there. When you honestly have forgiven someone, there is a love that begins to come back in your life. And here's what the Lord will help you. Some of you are stuck right where you were a year ago. Maybe two years ago. Maybe since your childhood, you're stuck there because of the way someone is hurt. Will you love them? Will you forgive them? You say, Dallas, what does that mean? Here's what it means for you today. It means then, right then today, you can begin to walk and go forward. And here's the thing about it. Do you, you mean, Dallas, do I have to, to be around that person? Do I have to still let that person just continually walk over because I'm a, a Christian? Absolutely not. You don't even have to be around that person anymore. You can walk because Jesus is walking with you. You can walk in this life knowing that you have forgiven them. That is the only way that you're going to heal from whatever it is in your life. As a child, Right now, whatever it might be, forgive them. That is the definition of love in our life through Jesus. And we know when we experience his love, his unconditional, his, his grace in our life, I want you to know that, that when you mess up, that Jesus still loves you. It doesn't matter what you've done. He still cares for you. I want you to know that in this life that we're going to go through, we're going to let people down. But whoever it is that's hurt you, I want you to know as we begin, you can walk in life. And you can go forth. You might not ever see that person again. You don't have to put yourself in that situation with them. All you have to do is know that you've forgiven them. And when you forgive them, here's where it is. When you walk, you go forward. That's what we want, isn't it? Don't you want to be successful and productive in life? We all want to be. Not by definition of our job, by who we are. We want to have freedom and joy. I want you to have that. And you can walk, leave it in the past, even leave that person if you have to in the past. But know the way Jesus has forgiven you and me. We gotta forgive. And as we forgive, now you can walk in such a way that you never thought you'd be able to do again. Because you've forgiven. Because you have a love in your life. And when you have a love in your life, guess what happens to your heart? Your heart gets tender again. It gets tender to such a place that you look at life the way that we should. And as we see that now that we're walking in life, what else happens? What is the Lord going to do? He's always going to be there with us, showing us what to do. Look at Luke in chapter 24. And I'm going to give you a little background on verse 32. Luke chapter 24 and verse 30. Jesus, fresh, recently, has just risen from the dead. And everybody in town is talking about the darkness in the middle of the day, who Jesus was, the earthquake, everything that's took, taken place the third day. He's risen. But yet, are you like the couple disciples that were walking along the road? They're walking along the road and they're discouraged. 
Are you in your life right now discouraged? Even though that you're a Christian, you're discouraged. You're walking on life. You're doing what the Lord wants you to do, but yet you're discouraged because Jesus hasn't come through the way that you thought he was going to come through. You love the Lord. You've forgiven. You're going your way, but you're just down. That's what these two disciples are. Well, we thought, man, didn't you think that the Lord was going to do it this way? Yeah, I, I did too. And I, all the miracles that he performed, all the things that, and I'd say, it's so quiet. Is your life quiet right now? Is it quiet? You don't hear much. They're walking along the road, and all of a sudden, someone walks along the side. Them. They don't know who it is, but it's Jesus. And he's saying, what are you talking about? Uh, you don't know? You don't know everything that's happened the last few days? About Jesus Christ? Who he was with you? Why don't you tell me about that? And they go on to tell him, and he says, and he reminds them, which is so important to us today. He reminds them of the scripture. Are you reminded today of what God's word is? We're going to look at it in just a minute. Are you reminded of what his word says? Because he reminded them of what Jesus said. They went a little further down the road. As they were walking with Jesus, they got about five to seven miles out of Jerusalem where they were at to spend the night. And the Lord was with them. They didn't know him. He had disguised himself. And they go and they sit down for a meal. As they sit down for a meal, they break bread. And their eyes are open. And they realize who Jesus is. It's Jesus that was talking to them. And he disappears. And here's what they say. And verse 32. This is what they said. After they remembered when Jesus was walking with them. On the road. In verse 32. And they said to one another. Did not our hearts burn within us? While he talked with us on the road. Let me read it again. And they said to one another, did not our heart burn within us while we talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? It goes further to say they were so excited. They were so on fire that they were able to get back up, turn around and walk five miles all the way back. To Jerusalem to tell everybody that they had seen Jesus. Are you tired to the place today to where you 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 just feel like you, you can't go further? You, you can't get there. But isn't it amazing how something will happen? You'll hear some good news, and it will all of a sudden it will so energize you. You know, it, it's amazing. When you get a phone call, 7 o'clock, you're tired from the work week, it's Friday night, exhausted, you get home, all of a sudden something happens. You get a phone call, and someone says, hey, guess what? The baby is on its way. Wow, everything just, everything changes, right? You get a whole new energy in your life. Maybe it's your grandchild, maybe it's your sister, brother, but something happens that you, all right, we're, we're getting out of here. You jump up and you're ready to go. You have more energy than what you think you have. That's what I want you to know today. And where does that come from? Does it come from working out? Does it come from getting enough sleep? It comes from where you are in your life today. That you can walk. And when you walk with the right person. When you walk with Jesus. And he's there with you. Your heart is going to burn. To the place or you can go forward. See, you don't think you can. And we try all these ways to go forward. We're going to eat right. We're going to run. We're going to do the things that we need to do. We're going to think right. I want you to know today in your life. You want to walk. You want to have victory in your life. Let the word of God burn in your heart. In your spirit. And when it does, you will go forward. No matter what you hear, no matter what someone tries to do that, yes, the person you've forgiven and you're doing great life, and all of a sudden they want to bring something back up from the past and it's going to pull you back instead of you going forward. You have a choice. Are you going to listen to them? Are you going to listen to the Lord? 
Are you going to let the Lord work in your life to where you have so much grace and power to where you can go for it? That's, it it's your choice today. See, that's my choice. God has given us a free will. Are we going to take it? Are we going to take it to the place to where, Lord, I am going to so trust what you've told me that I'm going to walk no matter what someone says or what they've done from the past. I remember what you said. I remember what you've done. Do you remember some things in your life? Are, are there some turning points in your life with Jesus that you know, that you know, that you know? Without Jesus Christ, you wouldn't have made it at that point in time in your life. He's no different today. He's there today, right now with you. We're going to look at one more verse. And we're going to close. As we keep walking and we're energized, we're going to look at God's Word. I don't, I don't want to give you a, a self-help, a motivation, all these different things that we see today that keep you going. You know, isn't it amazing at the beginning of every year? And all the health clubs have their highest membership at the beginning of the year. Everybody's going to change. Everybody's going to work out. And everybody is going to do that. And then about a weekend and about Two weeks in. Oh, that's it. Three weeks. You're done. Three weeks as a Christian. Really? I mean, do, there, there's more than that, isn't there? The way that you keep going is someone is with you today. I want you to know, no matter how alone that you feel, Jesus Christ is with you today. He's with you. You know, uh, one of the last jobs I had when I was uh, living in Florida a few years ago, four years ago or so, hey, did it to make extra money, decent money if you did it at a certain time. But I drove a cab. And I drove a cab from about 6.30, 7 at night till 2 in the morning. Now, if you know what that means, that about... Round about midnight, you start picking up everybody that you pick up is hammered. <laughs> and they start telling you their stories and going through everything. And yeah, okay. But it's amazing to me how the Lord will work. I'm going to tell you about one lady. I was taking her to back to her house from an exclusive kind of bar country club in Florida. It was the fifth most expensive zip code in all the United States. She gets in the cab. I knew it was gonna be about a 15 minute ride. So I have a captive audience always. So it's wonderful because it's amazing because they're half out of it anyway, so they're, yeah, you're doing, they're either real happy or really sad. And most of the time, they're more like being sad, especially, listen, especially when they're by themselves. They're alone. So I picked this lady up, she's about in her mid-40s. She'd been drinking, and um, we get in the car, or she gets in the back of the cab and I start driving. And she starts talking to me. She's by herself. She's out at a bar, attractive woman, uh, by herself, mid-40s, at a bar, by herself, drinking. I'm taking her back to the fifth most expensive neighborhood in all the United States. I know where I'm going because she told me where she lived. And I knew that area. So we're driving down and we begin to talk. And I begin to talk to her about the woman. I begin to tell her about who Jesus is, his power, and his grace. No matter what has happened in her life, no matter what has done, no matter how empty she might be that he can fill that void, I want you to know that the power of God is so strong and so real when someone is even drinking, Jesus, his spirit, his power, his word can even get into their life. I began to talk to her about Jesus and who he was in her life and what he can do. And, and she started crying. And she started talking to me. And we had this amazing conversation about Jesus Christ. 
and he could be Lord of Lords in her life if she wanted him to be. And we talked, and I pulled in as I stopped before a multi-million dollar home. She's crying. She leaned over the front of the cab. Never happened before. She leaned over the, the front of the cab and kissed me on the cheek with, with tears streaming down her face and thanked me. Got out of the car. Walked by herself. To about a five or ten million dollar home. See, I, I want you to know today, I, I want you to see the flip side. I want you to know no matter what you have, no matter how powerful you are, no matter all the things in the world, if you don't have Jesus, if you don't have his word, his spirit, life, it, it, there's no meaning. But I want you to know today that even when you're alone, and you might be alone today, I want you to know as a Christian that Jesus, He's with you. You may not realize it, but He's with you. What does the Bible say? Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 1 and 2. But now... Thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and who formed you, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you today. This is you. I have called you by your name. You, today as a Christian, you are mine when you pass through the waters. I will be with you. And through the rivers... They shall not overflow you. When you walk, when you walk, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Where is the tenseness in your life today? Where is it? Where's the uncertainty? Where's the question? Where's all those things? That it, it's a fire. It's, 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 a, it's such a place in your life that, that you don't think you can make it. And you know what? You can't. That's what I'm here to tell you today. I wouldn't have made it through the four years of hell that I went through by myself. I wouldn't have made it. But I had Jesus that was walking with me. Now here it is. Sometimes I didn't feel him. Sometimes I thought, where, where, where are you? Where are you? But he was there. He was there all the time. He is there today right with you. I want to leave you so it burns in your heart today with a couple more scriptures. Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. See what the devil does? You feel forsaken there. You feel unworthy. You feel like you've messed up. You feel like there's too much going on. Whether you're in high school, whether you're in college, or whether you're 50 or 60 years old, you feel like you're not worthy. We're not worthy. It's God's grace. It's His grace. I, Jesus said, today, even you might not feel that He's here with you. I, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, I, God Almighty, through the power of Jesus on the blood on the cross that he shed for all of us, I, Jesus Christ, is with you. Amen. And I never leave you. I will never forsake you. And our Lord said, and I close with this, the power that's in his word, he's here with you today. He's someone that's always going to walk with you. And the power comes from truly a belief system that is so built in your life that you know, that you know, that you know. Even in the quietness of the day and the week or the month, you hold on to the promises of God's Word. And you know that you know that He's coming through. Just walk. He's somebody that will always be with you. And he says, and I close with this, 
Yea, though I walk, you know it, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's you and I today. Your greatest fear, our greatest fear in this life, is life itself. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art. He's with you today. He is with you today. Not your past. Not who you think that you are. Not that you think that you're unworthy or you don't deserve him. He is with you today. He loves you more than you could ever imagine. He has a plan for you if you only knew what the future holds for you. You would be blown away. All I ask you to do today is when you walk with him, is trust him as he walks with you with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding. Acknowledge him every day in every way. And he is there with you and me to direct our path. Let's pray. Your heads are bowed today. Do you feel alone? You don't have to. As a Christian, whether you realize it or not, no matter what your temptation is, no matter what your struggle is, no matter what your past is, Jesus loves you more today than you could ever imagine. He's got a plan for you if you trust Him. Will you do that today as a Christian? Will you trust Him today? Will you so let His Word burn in your heart? The words that were said, not my words, but the words out of this book. His Word. God's Word. He will never leave you. He's walking with you today. It's quiet. You might not hear anything for a while. It's your faith. It's your faith. Will you trust him? He said, Dallas, it's been months. You don't know. I know I don't know. But Jesus is with you. And he's going to walk with you every step of the way. Even though you pass through the water, even though you go through, that's it, through, through, you will go through, listen to me, listen to me, you will go through this storm in your life, you're going to make it, you will make it, because Jesus is someone King of kings and the Lord of lords. He is the one that you will hold on to. He is the one that sometimes he just has to carry until you're ready to walk again. Father, we come to you today. Jesus, we love you. We are reminded today that we are not alone in this life. And Father, we know that we know that if we just trust you, Father, that, uh, Lord, that you will be with us. Jesus, you'll be with us. You're with us right now. And may we walk by faith today. May we walk by faith and trust you. Father, if there's someone here today that doesn't know you as their Savior, may they come forward and say, I don't want to live alone anymore. I want Jesus as my Savior. Father, we ask you today, as we stand and sing this invitation song, that someone would accept you today, and they can ask you into their heart, save them and cleanse them from all their sin. And 
they will never, ever be alone again. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you stand with me today?